grip on you and start yanking you all around, okay? So if I'm making contact with the hands, I can change the levels to hide the intention of me grabbing their collar. What am I gonna do once I make contact with their collar? Push them back. Yeah, push into them. So I can start to create a hollowed out situation where I can snap them down, okay? So I push them, so they take a few steps. I'm pulling my elbows to my waist, and what am I doing at the same time when I pull my elbows to my waist to make this snap down effective? Snap back, snap okay? It has to happen simultaneously, okay? So when you push and then you go snap down, I'm gonna step back to drag them so their hand touches the mat. I'm still hanging on to their other hand. I'll let go of that hand. I'll make a front headlock position. I'm blocking their arm with my hand that was on their collar or vice versa. You can go either way, but you're just gonna make sure you're making some sort of headlock position and blocking an arm. Okay, so it doesn't make a difference which way you go, just make sure that you're gonna do that. Put your head on the side of the arm that you're blocking. So when I go to change levels and start circling towards his leg, my head is lower than his upper body. You do not want my head over his upper body, okay? So when I go in this direction, the circle here, I wanna be low enough so I can push into him with my head, use my head appropriately. And now what am I looking to do when I get to this position? Bring it to the mat. I'm looking to drag their head as close to their knee as possible and drag their knee to the mat. So I'm like pulling him down into a turtle position. And James is really only play to defend himself from here is what? Sit back on his hip. Sit to his far hip, his free hip. Okay, so when they sit here, this is the thing that people start to jack up. They plow into the person from here. I don't want to plow into him because I may end up in guard where I can easily avoid the guard, okay? And again, I so remember, I, you're working on taking them down, but also control. If I just take them down and they stand right back up, it's not really appropriate and it's a waste of energy. So anytime you take the person to the mat, I wanna make sure that I use this position to keep them controlled on the mat. So I took them down, I got them on their butt, great. I gotta keep them there. So what do I do? My hand that's on the leg is gonna internally rotate their knee down. See how far I rotated his knee down? That's really important. I do not want his knee in the middle of my chest like this, okay? So if you guys pull and his knee's still up, pull his all the way down. Now. My close leg is gonna step over his leg, just slides across, but my far leg, the one that's connected to his head, that corresponds with his head, that one's gonna windshield wiper over that leg. Once I have that position, my hand that was on his leg can come off and grab his far hip. Now once I grab his far hip, I can let go of his head. And where is this hand going, the one that's on his head? Under his arm. Under his armpit that's closest to me. And why am I doing that as opposed to making like a arm triangle position or anything else? Why am I doing this? To flatten him out. No, not necessarily. So, you so he can get to his back. No, you guys are missing the bigger point. It's to do what? He can wrist control. <laughs> no, it, it's again, to control his center of gravity. So I want to be tight on his center of gravity so as I pass behind his legs, yes, I can connect my arms and everything. All you guys are kind of like on the right path, but ultimately it's so I can be tight to his center of gravity. So if James is still up like this, it's okay. What am I going to look to do before I do anything else? Break him down. Break him down. Good. I want to make him like, I want to start breaking him down to the mat, even if I want his back, because I want to make it harder for him to move around. So I'll always try to return him to the mat. So even if James now starts to build himself off, off of that, I can start building myself up off of that position. I want them to have to defend the position first, then being off the mat, build themselves back up before I just try to jump on them. If they're already kind of stable there after I just pass around them, that means they're probably comfortable in that position. I want to make them uncomfortable, be oh, I'm flat again. Then as they try to return back to their knees or their elbow, then I can advance off that. Okay, you guys have to understand, you went from being on the feet to taking them down to now behind them. Don't be so greedy, like, I gotta take their back. Again, you're creating these like weird scenarios that aren't necessary, and it just makes it easier for the other person. Eliminate their ability to scramble, and it's gonna make life a lot easier for you. So, hands, change level, to hide your intention to grab their collar, push, push, push. Snap them down until their hands touch the mat, front headlock, block their arm, circle and get that leg, pull their head towards their knee. And as they sit to defend themselves, I'm gonna internally rotate that knee, step over, windshield wiper my far leg over that leg, let go of their leg at that point, secure their hip, then I can let go of their head. Underneath their armpits, it's super tight here. The other thing about this is James trying to turn to his hip now, too, I'm outside of his guard. That's the reason that that windshield wiper position is so important. Look, now I'm in a good position. I can start pushing and pulling and breaking them down, making it harder on the person. Listen, I don't have to like rush up to their head. We've talked about this multiple times. Once you pass their legs, going to their head doesn't add anything. You don't get any extra points to it. Nothing for that. So rushing to their head for the sake of it doesn't do anything. 
Make sense? Yes. Give a shot. That's what they're going to do, whether they step back or they don't or they try to push into you. And that's typically the case you look for the underhooks. You want to push them back and they look to step into you as opposed to you being able to push them back. It's a good time to look for underhooks in this scenario. So if I make hand contact, change levels here, when I go to push James, he kind of gives me like a lot of static from here. That's a good time to let go of the collar and start to pummel the underhook from this position, okay? Again, I still haven't let go of the forearm. Now, here's the problem most people, when they make the underhook, they do weird shit. Okay, very similar to like almost everything else. Make an underhook and then they lose their mind. They want to like suplex the person, blah, blah, blah. You see people do weird, weird shit from here. And again, the reason we're going over this, I'm trying to make these scenarios easier for you guys to operate out of with the idea. Of so when you get here is so we can take them down with control. Okay, it's not just about scoring points. It's about getting to the mat with dominant position and control. Okay, so I get this underhook. Instead of immediately trying to body lock them and pick them up and all the other shit that everyone wants to do to people because it looks cool. WWE. Re really? And that's what it comes from most of the time. <laughs> so I'm going to make this easy on myself, but instead of trying to push just with my upper body, I'm going to step my leg that corresponds with my arm as deep to their legs as possible. One of two things is going to happen. I'm either going to step to him and be able to stand him straight up and connect my hands and body lock. And when I do this, because I stepped into him and straightened his back, I can connect my hands and then I can circle around and start to look to return them to the mat. Yeah, I'm not trying to pick them up, I'm trying to break them down the easiest way as possible. Or when I go to step towards their legs, what do you think they do? Step back. Back away. Step back. So when I step to my legs and he steps back, go back. And then I go right back into dragging the person back down. Okay. So it's a really simple, easy thing for you to work on in this circumstance. So you everything's exactly the same from the beginning. When I go to push into them, the person's gonna step into you, basically. So when your partner steps into you, we're gonna dig the underhook, and it's easier to dig the same side that you have collar grip with to make an underhook. And you're gonna do one of two things. You can tell your partner to act accordingly. When you go to step into them, you straighten their back, or you're gonna ask them to step back so you can work on that front headlock position. One of the two, very simple. So when you get here, and I go to step, and James kind of like steps into me, yeah, exactly. he's gonna leave with his head, and that's fine. I can underhook and I'm going to step in here and I'm going to be able to keep him here and connect my hands. And when I connect my hands, guys, I'm not trying to pick them up or anything like that. I'll keep trying to walk into them. So they're trying to clear their arm from this position and then, then you're on the hips, which makes life a lot easier. Or when you go to step in like this, he steps back, pull down on the underhook. And then again, same thing. I'm getting him, his hands to touch the mat before I do anything crazy. Okay? Make sense? Wow. Give a shot.